Hi there, and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we'll be trying to solve the JUPEP Physics June 2019 Theory Question 1. We'll start with Question 1A. Question 1A says, state the units and dimensions of the following quantities. The first one there is surface tension. The second one there is frequency. Alright, so let's get this done. Let's take the unit and dimension of frequency and surface tension. Let's Number one, we said surface tension. So let's start with surface tension. Um, surface tension. All right. So here's. All right. So here's what to note. When it comes to when it comes to dimensional quantities, there, the first thing you have to do is to be able to express them in mathematical form. And for surface tension, we have that the symbol for surface tension is gamma. That's the symbol for surface tension, gamma. And that's equal to, the mathematical expression is simply force over length. So it becomes force all over length. So all over length. All right, so I have this as the mathematical expression for surface tension. So my next task will now be to get the dimension of each of these. For force, your dimension of force is mlt to power minus 2. That's for force. All over for length, the dimension for length is L. Now by the way, I've done a video on dimensions and dimensional analysis. I'll leave a link to the video on dimension and dimensional analysis in the description of this video. For now, let's proceed. So in that video, you see how force is equal to ml to the power minus 2 and how length is equal to L, just in case you don't know how we got that, all right? So you see a video that explains all of this in the description of this video. All right, so let's proceed. From here, you can see that length will cancel length there. I'm left with what there? m t to the power minus 2, all right? So m to the power minus 2 becomes the dimension of surface tension. We also have asked to find the unit. Now for the unit, we said surface tension is equal to force. Force is in Newton divided by length. Length is in meter. So the SI unit, the SI unit is Newton per meter. So Newton per meter becomes my SI unit, all right? So you can write Newton per meter as N slash M, Newton per meter, or as N M to the power minus one. Any of this works. All right, so this becomes the SI unit and as well as the dimension for surface tension. Let's get for frequency. So number two, let's consider the second parameter there, number two. That's, um, for number two, let's look at the next one there, which is um, frequency. All right, number two, frequency. Frequency F is simply equal to the inverse of period. All right, so frequency is actually a small f, small letter f is equal to the inverse of period. And that's equal to 1 all over t is the dimension for period. And again, I've said, I've done a video on dimensioning, dimensional analysis, all right? If you want to check out that video, just simply look at the description of this video. You'll see a link to my video on dimensioning. All right, so that's equal to, to write this in index form, it becomes t to the power what there? Minus 1. So t to the power minus 1 becomes the dimension for frequency. We also have to find the SI units. For the SI units, we said frequency, small f, is equal to 1 all over t is period, and period is measured in seconds. So that becomes what there? 1 over second. So we can say the SI unit for period, for frequency, is per second. So it's either per second. Per second is simply s to the power minus 1. That's the 1 unit. Or we can use the general unit of frequency, which is hertz. Right, so hertz is the much more acceptable, which is hz. So hertz hz is the much more acceptable um, 
SI unit for frequency. All right, so this is the solution to the first part. That is to find the dimension. And we said this is the dimension for surface tension, while this is the SI unit of surface tension. Also, for frequency, we said this here is the dimension of frequency, while these ones here are the SI units for frequency. All right, so we are done with the A part, the I and II. Let's look at III. All right, let's look at the next thing there. The next thing, I, I, I says, show that the expression V squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2AS is dimensionally correct, where V and V naught represents the final and initial velocities, A is acceleration, and S is displacement. All right, so let's get this done, the equations of motion. And I'm having here that V squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2 as so i have this um, equation so i'm asked to show that this equation is dimensionally correct so how do i know that an equation is dimensionally correct the idea will be very simple i would look for a way to prove that each of the terms in the equation all have the same dimension irrespective of the coefficient all right so this, that, that's the criteria for you to know that um, an expression or an equation is dimensionally correct. The criteria is very simple, that each of the terms must have the same dimension irrespective of the coefficient. Now, if that's true, how do we make this work? For here, we have three terms in this equation. V squared is my first term. That is the square of the final velocity. V naught squared is my second term. That is the square of the initial velocity, and 2as is my third term. That is 2 times acceleration times displacement. All right, so let's prove that this is dimensionally correct. What do I do? So starting with the last one there, v squared, final velocity is v, all squared. So first things first, for v, v is final velocity. For velocity there, what is the dimension for velocity? For velocity, dimension is simply lt to power minus 1. I have this. Now, since there's a square here, since there's this square here, it means I'm going to square the dimension. And if I square dimension, it becomes V to V, L, L to the power minus 1, all square. So I have this. And this is equal to, of course, this square affects both L and T. Okay? So this square comes to L and also comes to T. So what do we have there? If this is true, that means by the time you expand this bracket, it becomes L squared times T to the power. The power of T here is minus 1. So it becomes minus 1 times that 2. So I have this. If I work on this, this is equal to L, L squared times T to the power. Minus 1 here multiplies 2. That gives you minus 2. That becomes T to the power minus 2. If I move this, this is equal to L squared t to the power minus 2. All right. So this becomes the dimension of V squared. Let's now take for V naught squared. V naught squared, V naught, which is initial velocity all squared, is equal to, now here's the thing, whether it's initial or final, velocity is still velocity. Hence, it will have the same SI unit as well as the same dimension, which is LT to the power minus 1. Of course, we are squaring this. That's this square here. Since we are squaring this, that becomes this one here, all squared. And that's now equal to, so do the same expansion, becomes L squared times T to the power 2 times minus 1, or minus 1 times 2, whichever way. Um, that would give us minus 2. All right. And that's equal to, if I combine them, it gives me L squared T to the power 
minus 2. So I have this. Our final tax is to look at the one for 2AS, which is this one here. Look at this one here, 2AS. So take down 2AS and see what we get. So let's take 2AS. Let's take 2AS. So the final term there in that equation is 2AS. I'm having 2AS. And that's equal to 2 times A is acceleration. For acceleration, the SI unit is meter per second squared. And the dimension is LT to power minus 2. This is acceleration times S. If you go back to this, they said S here. said S is the displacement. All right. What's displacement? Displacement is simply distance traveled in a specified direction. In other words, displacement and, di and distance have the same unit and also the same dimension, which is what there? L. So we have this. As I said earlier, we've, we've treated dimensions in a previous class. For you to check out a video on dimensions and know how these LT things work, just simply look at the description of this video. All right, so proceeding further, this becomes 2, becomes 2 into this one here becomes LT to power minus 2 times L. Combine this gives you 2 into L here times L here gives you L squared into this one here. That's t to the power minus 2. All right. So to confirm that these are dimensionally correct, remember that we said that the criteria is that they will have the same dimension, irrespective of the coefficient. For this one here, my dimension is L squared t to the power minus 2. For this one here, my dimension is L squared t to the power minus 2. For the third one, I have 2 L squared. T, I have 2 and then L squared t to the power minus 2. Now, since this 2 here is a coefficient, we can ignore the coefficient. If I focus on the dimension here, all three have a dimension of L squared t to the power minus 2. So you now come and say, therefore, say, therefore, since the three terms, since the three terms of the they used expression actually it's actually an equation but fine let me use that term of the expression have have the same dimension have the same dimension comma the equation or the expression okay let's use the term they use the term expression so the expression the expression is dimensionally correct all right so with this now we have successfully answered um, this question question 1a so let's look at question 1b in our next class